Global Banking and Finance Review Awards reflect the innovation, achievement, strategy, progressive and inspirational changes taking place within the global financial community. The awards were created to recognize companies of all sizes, prominent in particular areas of expertise and excellence within the global financial community. Today, we're glad to offer Allianz Trade, based in Hong Kong, an award for Best Trade Credit Insurance Company, Asia Pacific 2021. Based in the vibrant city of Hong Kong and formerly named Eula Hermes, the company is now proudly rebranded Allianz. With more than 125 years of expertise, Allianz Global Business Intelligence is unrivaled. Allianz Trade offers technology-driven processes across the Asia-Pacific region, which are used to generate insights and present actionable information to businesses of all sizes and in all sectors. We talked to Paul Flanagan, CEO in the Asia-Pacific region, about the exciting new rebrand and planned goals for the future. Well, Paul Flanagan, thank you so much for joining us from Hong Kong for today. And uh, congratulations on the awards from Global Banking and Finance. Thank you, Phil. Thanks for having me. And uh, yes, thank you. We're very honoured and uh, very pleased to have the awards. We Thank you very much. It's a great res- recognition of, uh, of Euler Hermes. Very proud. Well, let's start by talking about some of the developments at your organisation. And now, of course, an exciting new development, a new brand name, Alliance, a worldwide brand, which is now part of your operation as well. Tell us a little bit about that and how it came into being. Sure. Well, we've been wholly owned by Allianz since 2018, so we've been part of the Allianz family for quite a long time. So it made sense that at some point we had adopted the, the Allianz brand name. So that's really what this is all about. It's a culmination of us becoming part of the, the larger Allianz family. Um, but as I said, we've been part of Allianz for a long time, so it would have very little impact day to day. It's just really a rebranding and just to, to leverage the value of the Allianz brand. The old Eula Hermes brand, of course, as you know, has been around for a long time. And Eula Hermes as market leader, you know, we have a lot of um, strength in that brand. We've been around for 130 years. It's a very well-known brand. But we feel that the Allianz brand, being a, a global uh, brand, one of the, if not the great, the most widely known insurance brand globally, it's a better move for Eula Hermes to adopt the Allianz branding. And again, attaching it to trade, links it to our business, which of course is uh, trade credit insurance. Well, obviously rebranding any giant company is quite a big challenge. What kind of challenges did it bring to you and your team to bring this about? Surprisingly very little in terms of operational changes. I mean, obviously um, changing a global brand like this in over 50 countries is a major exercise, not just from a, a paper and a documentation and a branding, but also an IT and systems exercise. So it's been a big a big effort and the teams globally have worked you know for over a year on this but interesting enough again as i said being part of Allianz since 2018 we'd already already become quite close operationally and we had we already share a lot of services and it platforms so operationally it will have very little impact on our business um, our clients will not really notice any difference other than uh, the brand name and the same for our brokers and our other partners they will still deal with the same the same people, the same teams, and we will continue in the the Euler Hermes way in terms of our culture and the way we interact with our clients. So operationally, um, from a client perspective, not a big impact. Well, not too many changes then, but how do you see Allianz's trade positioning going forward from now? Yes, I think it will. It, I think it's a logical next step for Euler Hermes. As I said, you know, the, the Euler Hermes company in one form or another has been around for over 100 years. We're the global market leader. We're based in over 50 countries. Um, so we're a very well-known brand name, really a household name when it comes to credit insurance. But outside of that, um, the brand is not so well-known, particularly globally. So in terms, of, in terms of positioning, what the Allianz brand gives to Euler Hermes is to it opens a whole new, um, whole new population of uh, potential customers via the Allianz network. Allianz have a lot of companies who who probably haven't heard of Euler Hermes before, but now with the Allianz name attached, Allianz Trade will give us access to the, the Allianz portfolio of clients, to their distribution network. And also that in many countries, Allianz have a very strong um, sales team, their own agents. So again, having the same brand will give us access uh, to those distribution channels, particularly um, on the SME uh, sector, which is an area where we believe there's a lot of growth and Allianz have a lot of SME clients. So the, the branding will allow us to, 
to gain more global recognition in areas where Euler Hermes is not so well known and access those, those expanded uh, distribution channels and, and other networks. So I think it allows us to give a more of a global uh, positioning on our product. Well, that's quite a lot about the company. Let's talk about you now, if we may. I know you've recently taken over this new position here at Allianz. What kind of challenges do you see and how did it all come about? And tell us a little bit about your background as well. Yes, yes, I joined the, uh, the APAC team in, uh, in the summer of 2021. Um, but I've been working with Euler Hermes now, or some iteration of the Euler Hermes group, for over 30 years. So uh, I joined uh, Euler Hermes in the UK uh, 30 years ago. And in the 30 years I've been here, I've worked in a number of uh, countries and a number of functions. So I started off in the finance arena, then I moved into the underwriting and risk management and information side of the business. Um, so I, then I, but I've also done other roles. Uh, I had a regional risk job in Northern Europe, which covered all of Northern Europe. And I also had some time in Canada. And before I came to APAC, I was the CEO of Euler Hermes Poland. So I lived in Warsaw for five years and ran the business there. So I've come, so you, yes, a you rather work. long route to get to APAC. <laughs> well, obviously you've uh, moved around the world quite a bit. Tell us a bit about your first impressions of the Asia Pacific region or APAC as it's known. Um, so far, it's been a real, uh, it's been very exciting for me. I mean, I've worked, as I said, in different countries, but primarily in, in Europe. So APAC for me is a very different experience. It's a, it's a very vibrant and diverse region, lots of different countries, different cultures, different languages. So it's a very challenging and, and stimulating uh, environment for me. Hong Kong, I think probably one of the most um, vibrant cities I've had the pleasure to live in, even with at the moment, we're struggling a little bit with COVID, but even with COVID, it's still a fantastic city to live in. And you know, I find out more about it every, every day. It's a very exciting place. And of course, we're right on the doorstep of a, of a very big region, particularly China, where we see massive opportunities for growth in the future. So I'm really uh, very excited to be here. Yeah. Well, you mentioned that you've been in the business for 30 years now. So uh, taking a look at the position where you are at this particular point, how do you compare the trade credit insurance industry in that region, the Asia Pacific region, of course, with the rest of the world at the current time? Yes, I think the, the most important factor to me coming to the APAC region is that it's, it's a very young region when you consider um, trade credit insurance as an industry has been around, as I said, for, for a very long time. But in APAC, it's, it's relatively new. So we opened our office in Hong Kong only 20 years ago, which for Eula Hermes is, is not that long. As, as I said, we've been around for over 130 years. So it's a very young, uh, it's a very young region for, for Eula Hermes and for the, the product we sell. Um, and what I notice here is that the recognition of trade credit as a product um, is very low compared to Europe. The, the penetration of trade credit insurance into the business uh, population you know, is very low. So we have a lot of work to do to raise awareness of the product, um, to understand what the local client needs are and to adapt their product to suit those needs. So for me, it's a very young market. It's relatively un un underpenetrated. Um, so for me, a lot of opportunity. And of course, we're the center of a, you know, a major industrial hub, you know, not only for, you know, the, 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 the manufacturing center of the global manufacturing center, but also a regional center where a lot of trade is going on within the region. So it's a very, it's a very big and very exciting region and lots of opportunity there. And again, I think that's where Allianz trade will really help us because Allianz is known in, in APAC, you know, it's very well um, known, has operations throughout the region. So having a Having the Allianz brand attached to Euler Hermes, I think, will help us raise that awareness, particularly in the SME sector here, which is very underdeveloped. And we're trying to explore ways that we can we can tap into that, and Allianz will really help us with that as well. So the brand is important here. Well, at the time of the recording, we're almost at the end of the first quarter of 2022. What do you see as your plans going forward for the rest of this year? Yeah, yeah, nearly at the end of the first quarter already. It's it's uh, incredible how fast. Yeah, for for us in uh, in the APAC region, it's very much a, a growth strategy. So where we have basically you know three main uh, areas where we're focusing on. The first is really 
to extend our core business in APAC. So really to focus on the core trade, in, trade insurance product and, the, and the, the service. So number one priority for us is to get back to normal after COVID because with COVID, global trade did shrink a little bit. So our business shrank with it. But now as most countries are coming out of the, the COVID slowdown, we're seeing a real pickup in business. So number one priority is to get back to where we were pre-COVID. And we're already very close to that in terms of our risk appetite, the exposure, the, the, the new business figures are all returning to normal. So really getting back to the market, um, getting back in touch with our customers again and starting, you know, growing the core business again. That's number one. The second focus we have is, is on developing some new uh, lines of business in APAC, what we refer to as our growth engines. So what we're looking at is surety or bonding, as it's sometimes called in, uh, in the UK. So we want to grow our surety business in APAC, which is quite, low, quite small compared to our trade credit. But again, there's a lot of opportunity here. So we're looking to grow our surety business, our excess of loss business, which is another product for bigger clients. And also what we call our transactional cover unit, which is more bigger, long-term project-based financing. So we have some new products. So develop the core, add on some new products to get some additional growth. Um, and then the next big thing, the next big challenge coming for us is, is the, the move of global trade online. I mean, that's been happening, of course, for a long time. But now we're seeing it's reaching the point where a lot of B2B business is now going fully online, where people are... Companies are going online, they're sourcing materials, they're, they're entering into contracts and relationships with, with uh, customers and clients that they've never met. So there's a big move online. So B2B is going to be more and more online, a bit like B2C is. So we have to retool our, our product and our offering to provide services to those companies who are selling through, for example, platforms, uh, buy now, pay later type arrangements, or co companies who want to run their own e-commerce type arrangements. We need to develop products that will support those and be ready to support those and the fintechs who are entering into that. So the third strand is really getting ready for the future of trade credit because it will change you know, pretty rapidly over the next few years. We'll see B2B follow B2C online and into the cloud and so we need to be ready. So we're gearing up for that as well. Um, so that's our, that's our plan for this year. Q1, as you mentioned, is coming to the end and it's been so far, quite successful. We're on track with, with all of our major, uh, our major plans. We're seeing, interestingly enough, as we return to normal, a slight increase in the, uh, the, the amount of claims we're getting and the amount of overdues that's being reported. So again, things are returning back to normal. Clients are starting to trade on open account again. Um, government subsidies are starting to gradually fade away and we're seeing a return to more normal activity, which will mean more claims, which is to be expected, but uh, I think it's a sign that we're getting back to normal. Well, that's good news. What do you see then finally as short or long-term goals for the future? Yeah, I think the immediate short term, other than the ones I've mentioned really, is to, is to focus on the customer relationship. I think in this region, uh, in, you know, it's, it's a very big, diverse region. There's a lot of, lot of business being done, a lot of competition. It's a very aggressive market. So I think for me, forging strong relationships with clients and business partners like brokers and other fronting companies is very important. So we're really focusing this year, in addition to growth and top line growth, but in focusing on the client. So building stronger relationships, looking at the customer journey, how can we make that easier for the client, remove as much of the hassle as possible, build closer relationships, digitalize the product as much as we can to make the, the admin, you know, the burden of admin a lot lighter. So we're focusing a lot on retention of clients, building relationships and retaining clients. You know, it's, off, it's just as important to retain. Once you've won those clients, you have to keep them. So that's a real battle in this market where it's very aggressive. So we're focusing a lot on, on customer experience, customer journey. You know, when we do our net promoter score surveys, for example, we do that every, every year or so. Last year, we were rated number one in terms of net promoter score. So for me, that's a very important and one of my key goals this year is to keep that number one rating, you know, into 2022 and 23. So a lot of focus on customer service. Longer term, I think it's all about increasing the penetration into the market. So we have lots of markets here in the APAC region. China's an obvious one, but we have obviously very interesting markets in Australia, Indonesia, Vietnam, places like this where there is growth. So you know, longer term to me, it's about increasing the awareness, increasing the penetration of trade credit insurance 
into this market, leveraging the Allianz brand, leveraging the distribution and the, and the help that they can give us. And then again, focusing on the digital part of our business long term. And we have as a group, you know, a very aggressive and ambitious IT strategy to get our, our IT systems up to, up to the level they need to be for the, for the future. So those are our medium to long term uh, strategy goals right now. Well, coming back to the basics and, and TCI, trade credit insurance, how would you say that acts as an advantage for organisations, uh, as a financial advantage, that is, and indeed as a financial solution building block as well? Yeah, I think the main thing, the main benefit I think credit insurance brings to the table is really confidence, confidence to trade, uh, confidence to expand, confidence to take on new clients. Um, you know, a vast majority of, of trade globally is on credit. And you know, credit, trade credit is really like an invisible bank. It's a really, it oils the wheels of industry. Um, so the role of credit insurance there is really to allow people to engage in that kind of, that risk of trading with, with customers that you don't maybe know very well or in, are in different countries or different legal setups. So it gives, credit insurance is all about giving you the confidence to trade, knowing that you will be paid. And if you're not paid, you know, we're here to, to indemnify you against any loss or before that we have a very strong international collection service so we can recover that debt but if in the end that doesn't happen you know that we're here to to pay that debt that you will you will get you may we not get paid but even more importantly i think is is avoiding that risk in the first place because even if you do get yeah you know, indemnified for a loss you've wasted a lot of time and energy finding clients or customers trading You've lost that margin that you would have had if you had, you know, found different clients. So our our model is about helping clients to identify the right customers, avoid the risky ones, be covered in the event of they have a surprise. But you know, really, our our plan, our our main service is to help people avoid that situation and and direct them into the right clients so that they can trade with confidence locally. And more and more clients now, of course, have to trade internationally. That's where it gets very difficult and we're there to support them in that growth. So I think we, we really feel that we're the oil in the engine. You know, we allow companies to trade, to take on that, that risk because they know that we're there to back them up. And you know, we did a survey a few years ago of CFOs where I think 73% of them had said they'd experienced payment delays or non-payment of invoices. You know, and not getting paid you know, really can destroy a lot of margin. You have to do a lot of, a lot of top line additional sales to recover the margin that you lose if you don't get paid. So really we're there to kind of to cushion against that. And you know, our real our USP is that we have a database of over it constantly grows, but we have 80 million corporations on our database in and we're present in 52 countries. And we're monitoring all of the solvency of all of those companies on a daily basis. So we're very close to the risk and we can give our clients advice very quickly and in terms of the global contribution, Euler Hermes, Allianz Trade, I should say, you know, we, we, we're currently insuring something over 930 billion euros of trade. And that's a normal, you know, that's normal, that's our, that's our day-to-day operation. And we're monitoring that risk on behalf of our clients, you know, globally, uh, 24-7. So I think that database is our USP. It's also a great opportunity for us to, we have lots of data payment data, sales data. So we have lots of tools that we can apply, digital um, machine learning, artificial intelligence that we're constantly investing on. So we're not only are we an insurance company, we're also an information and a data company to a certain extent. And that's what makes Eula Hermes, I think, unique as a, as a company, certainly within the Allianz Group. Well, we've talked a lot about your business. Are there any particular aspects of that business that particularly fascinate you and interest you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we do business in all sectors. And in my experience, the, the big sectors vary from region to region for obvious reasons. So for us in APAC, the, the ones that stand out to me are electronics, electronics manufacturers and suppliers. You know, it's a big business in, in APAC and growing, um, both in terms of exporting to, to Western economies, but also within the region. So we have a reasonably large electronics portfolio and we're really we're, we're, we're pursuing that aggressively. We've, we did a, a big study this year. We, 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 we did some, um, we published a 
some some data, some reporting on it, and we followed up with a big marketing push to get more. So uh, electronics is big. Uh, we're also very interested in the agri-food sector and the chemical sector, which we think are have the right um, growth matrix, the right growth dynamics for us. So we're we're working on some analysis. We'll we'll be publishing some data on that shortly, and we'll follow that up with some uh, with some exercises. So I think those are the three ones that stand out for me. Um, but if you take it away from sector and think about segment a little bit, uh, I mentioned already SMEs. I think um, SME is quite a large part of our business in Europe, but not so much in, in APAC. So I think there's some scope in some markets where we can probably support SMEs with a simple, easy to use digital product. Um, we have to understand what the needs of our SMEs are in APAC because they won't be the same as they are in, in Northern Europe. But we're working on a, you know, a product that we can sell to, to SMEs, maybe through some banking uh, distribution channels. So again, finding a different way to market. Um, another area we're very interested in are multinational companies who are trading from APAC. So we have a lot of business with multinationals who trade here, you know, with you know, for in, um, subsidiaries or, or operations of, of multinational companies. But there are also Asian companies who are now starting to, to trade uh, internationally. And we feel we can really support those uh, multinationals because again, we're in 50 countries, 52 countries. We have thousands of people, you know, we literally have uh, you know, five and a half thousand employees globally. So, you know, we can help them find the right customers. So I think there's a big opportunity for us to support multinationals out of APAC, particularly China. We're seeing some interesting development there. And then the final area um, is surety bonding. Um, that's an area where I think we can see great opportunity for growth, particularly in China, Korea, Australia, we already have a very healthy bonding business, but there's, there's more we can do there. Well, Paul Flanagan, thank you so much for joining us today from Hong Kong and this hookup. And once again, congratulations on the awards received from Global Banking and Finance. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it.